Mr. Carl, I don't know if this is a good idea. I just don't see how it would bring in more views. Yes, I remember I did those things to you. I didn't hit you that much. All right, fine, we'll do it. We'll do it, all right? We'll fucking do it. Hey, guys, how's it going? Ryan, the two-headed Cyclops here. So listen, folks, I feel bad. I've been mean to my little buddy here, Carl, for the whole entire series, so no more. No more. It's all about that unity. The engine, not not actually unity. We're actually working on a new video game on the unity engine. I think it's going to go places. I really do. I think it's going to be good. It's, uh, it's going to be a take on Dance Dance Revolution. Except it's just going to be twerking ponies. I'm going to be honest, I don't really get it. But Carl seemed pretty convinced by the idea. And you know what? His enthusiasm had me. Hello everybody, and welcome to Rhyme Reacts. Today, we're checking out another episode of MLP. Carl, listen bud, I think you're taking up a little too much of my shirt. I mean, I, I only got so much. Listen here, you bloody wanker. I've been here trying to have fun and dance for the fine people, but you were nothing but an inconsiderate little leech. I hope nothing more than for you to trip down an endless set of stairs. I hope the next girl you date is the reincarnate of Adolf Hitler. And lastly, I think you smell bad. Oh shoot, Carl, that freaking knocked you out, buddy. That Carl's gonna stop doing so many acrobats, he's gonna freaking get a concussion. Good landing, bud! In the last episode, we got to meet our favorite new character, Gilda the Sassy Griffin, who goes around pranking losers and nerds. In a world of losers and nerds. In this episode, I hope to at least have one character be just as memorable as Gilda. So I hope it's a... Just a rabid chimpanzee just going ape shit in the background. Like, don't explain it. Just have a background. <laughs> what's it doing back there? What's his, what's his mission? What's his goal in life? Why is he shaking his both his fists? Is he angry or is he imitating two dicks? Two dicks at the same time. Two? How can you how can you have the mental capacity to have two dicks? Like you're gonna get desynced at some time. That means someone's gonna get more than the other. Then someone's gonna get the shaft. So this episode seems to be called the Boastbusters. I don't get it. I don't see what that could possibly be referencing. Of course, folks, if you want to check out the original content, it will be on Netflix, uh, you, or you can see it on the Hub Network, or you can purchase it on Amazon. So I am on the one second to watch this uh, this next episode, and uh, it's a little worrisome. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. I mean, it could it could be it could it could be all right. I'm more of fascinated by how how swole Spike is. He has been working out. He has been work, working out. <laughs> What's on the other side? What is on the other side? What is on the other side? What is on the other side? Is he looking at the mirror? Is that what he's looking at? Or is the mirror in the background? Is he looking? I don't know what he's looking at! And the show has a high track record of Bootis being on the other side of the camera. Every time! You know, I got a message from Matt saying, You notice, you just notice in the butts too much, my man. Why you notice in all the butts? Because they're everywhere's, Matt! Everywhere's! It's one of those things that once you see it, you can't unsee it. Of course, I could have went through this whole series not thinking about the Bootis. But the problem is... I've thought about it, because it was right there. If you freaking walked into a room in a pony's anus or a horse's anus, that's right, double the gas damage, which is right there in your face. And it wasn't moving. It wasn't going away. Sometimes it goes away, though. But then it goes back again. 
that first time you noticed the butt? It's all downhill from there, my man. Because you won't unsee it. You will never unsee it. Wow, he's like Tom Selleck! Crawling magic. That's number 25. 25 different types of tricks and counting. And I... Wait. Wait a minute. Did he say I was growing magic? If it's growing magic... And not hair magic... Does that mean dragons can grow... <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. I was literally just about to say, can dragons grow mustaches? And the show already answered it! Oh, frick. You know, you have these moments where you flabbergasted that a dragon grow and grow a mustache, and then you remember, you knew this all along, you dumb dumb. I just didn't expect freaking Spike to be able to freaking pull off one of them. Whoa! You know your boy can pull off a dirty Sanchez. On one of them ponies, probably Rarity. So far, hello, Rarity. What's that? Stop doing that! Stop it! What is it, mandatory now that once per episode I freaking say something and the show's just like, Oh, Ryan, we are always watching you. You will become a brony and you will love it. I gotta go into hiding, guys. I gotta go into hiding. I gotta go into hiding. I probably should finish the episode first. I think you guys would be angry if I just end the episode right now. But after this, I'm going into hiding. And you're never gonna find me because I'll be deep in a bunker in the middle of nowheres. With my husband, Eustace Bag. As attractive and enticing as you look, it's just for practice and it's gotta go. Wait! Why does it have to go? What, is it gonna give him a disease? If you keep wearing it, you'll probably suffocate to death. Though it does seem that once you get rid of the mustache, what you get is the opening, so please bring back the mustache. Oh, Spike, stop. I'm sure there are lots of ponies right here in Ponyville that know just as much magic. Well, don't call me Sparkle Pants for nothing. Nobody really calls you that, Sparkle Pants, because that's not your real name. Wait, hold on a second. Where is this unicorn? Oh, she's in a town square. Come on! Yeah! Come on! Come run! Come all! Come and witness the amazing magic of the great and powerful Trixie! I take it back. That looks like a posh shithead. Holy shit, I passed on the most unimpressed face of Sparkle Pants I have ever seen in my entire life. And I don't know if that's just mid-animation, like I'm gonna go one second and she's just like, wow. But right now, she doesn't give a shit about you. Also, can we have a serious talk? I'm a little, I'm just, I'm just a little confused. Uh, because say that, uh, she's a unicorn, right? Uh, that does mean that St Sparkle Pants... Rarity and uh, a high pony in the back there. Wow, bud. Freaking past that doobie. Uh, oh, this one. He's technically a unicorn too. Just a malnourished one, but he's, he sure is one. Um, if, they're, if they're unicorns, I think they may have gotten some names wrong. I feel like my little, which is, which is generous, by the way. Which is generous. This guy, little, yeah. Uh, but Sparkle Pants? Someone's gotta go on the Jenny Craig diet, am I right, ladies? Because she's hack! Why the frick is a show called My Little Ponies if half the cast are unicorns? Unless they're not, and if that's the case, why do they have unicorn horns? This has got me so upset I have to take a shit.
Come on. <laughs> I thought Spiders be like, come on, Rarity. You've never been posting. There's nothing wrong with being talented, is there? Was, was Spike going back for the mustache so he can get deep in that ass? Flip flop. I'm gonna call him Flippy Flop Spike. One episode? Eee, girls are nasty! Next episode? I need mustache! Daddy needs to get lucky! Well, well, well. It seems we have some naysayers in the audience. Some naysayers! Naysayers! Remember, guys, just so you know, uh, she also did this single hoofingly. Of the most magical unicorn in all of Equestria. He has a snail on his butt. Who does she think she is? Yeah, because we all know that Twilight here is Spike. Shh. What? What's wrong? Guys, it took you. That's not even a pony. That's a cardboard cutout. Secondly, it took you the entire episode to figure out Gilda was an asshole. But this one says one freaking arrogant thing, and she's the devil. Hold on a second, everybody. Hold on a second, everybody. Call from Denzel. Hey, bud. Hey, you guy. Uh, yeah, it's me. Hey, who never picks up the phone and makes you sad? Yep. Uh, how do you do? Cause y you you don't talk to me anymore. Makes ma makes me feel so sad. I I agree. I agree. But Dan, uh, can I ask you a question? I swear to Christ, if this is some fucking thing to hang up on me. Uh, Dan, is Trixie Pony best pony? I'm, no, no, Dan. No, it's it's not My Little Ponies. It's my nephew's uncle's friend. You're asking for a friend? Yeah. My nephew's uncle's friend. I don't know which pony that is, so no. I'm gonna have to go with no. See, the irony of this is my nephew's uncle friend would be you. So technically I'm asking for you. You motherfucker! <laughs> Holy shit! Oh my god! They have drawn the embodiment of ego. Yeah! Applejack just punched her in the face! Yay! Yay! I love bondage! <laughs> Rainbow Dash like, I used to be in a guild wearing leather! You wanna frick take me on? The thing is, I feel like even if she can do better with magic, it's like it's still impressive physical feats, right? Physical versus magical. They don't call me Rainbow and Dash for nothing. <laughs> they don't call me gay for nothing. She beat her up with her own gay pride flag! That's messed up. I think I'm gonna be sick. I'm always sick when you're around, Rainbow. Every single time. You may think you're tough with all of your so-called powers, but there's more to magic than your brutish ways. A unicorn needs to be more than just muscle. A unicorn needs to have Sometimes I think about going through a conquest of getting a glove and putting five rocks in the glove and then snap my fingers to making just Rarity and Trixie disappear. Then I'm the real magic man. Snap of my fingers. Three claps. Five Batista bombs. And one swap. Anyone you've ever adored or ever thought of sexually would cease to exist. I know she did something terrible to me! Nothing. It's fine. It's gorgeous. It's green. What? Uh, no! Green hair! Not green hair! <laughs> hey, there's a lot of anime.
anime characters that are very f <laughs> offended. <I've never. laughs> Once again, the great and powerful Trixie has proven herself to be the most amazing unicorn in all of Equestria. Was there ever any doubt? I just want the next scene to be just Spike grabbing her. Just like, don't you talk shit about Pringle Pants! I love it when he gives me things on his buttocks. What are you two doing? Just bringing the tea and PT. Just trying to get laid. Unlike you, you confused dragon. Were you guys actually there? Well, uh, uh, no, but but nothing. The proof is in the pudding. <laughs> I like pudding. He had a lot of concussions, all right? When he came out of the womb, he fell right on his head down a flight of stairs that was looped off a mountain, all right? Spike, don't freaking make fun of him. Also, his mother was a vulture. Didn't you see how they hated Trixie's bragging, Spike? If I go out there and show off my magic, I run the risk of losing them as friends. It's not the same thing. <laughs> Hold on, Twilight. So your logic here is by helping my friends by getting back at her with the magic, they're gonna hate me because I'm showing off by helping them. You know what? You know what I think it actually is? I think Twinkle Pants has magic erectile dysfunction. She can't get it up. <laughs> When I can't even see my own <laughs> It's gonna be like the adventure time scene where it's just like, hey bud, do you just lick me? Right now? Yeah. No. Huh. Ah. Huh. Ah. Just light the matches. This is the horrible monsters. But this time, instead of monsters, it's just Pinkie Pie. Everywheres. <laughs> Please kill. <laughs> you rev it up, bud. <laughs> wow, is he a bear or a galaxy? I can't tell. Ah. <laughs> she has a stall window. <laughs> I like to be treated like a real horse. I want men to ride me. Trixie, wow, this is a kid's show. Hey, I got a question. Why does a universe bear live in a cave when it's the universe? Do we live in a cave? I mean, he looks pretty, like, see-through. I feel like if he ate you, he'd just be like, and I'll be going. Thanks for the armband. Oh, come on, Trixie! Stop goofing around and vanquish it, eh? <laughs> <laughs> you mean he's stupid and Canadian? I think they're trying to tell me something here. My Little Ponies hates men and Canadians. Oh. <laughs> uh -oh. You sapped my humpus. <laughs> How great would this be if this is what beats him? Oh no! A light breeze! My one week! Wait. I'm not quite getting the logic of the magic. That's right. A, I made a gust of wind that made flowers make magical music. Even though that's technically not the magic. Would have worked better if that was honey, though. <laughs> what is going on? Is this magic molestation? Oh, it was. That's new. <laughs> to the moon! <laughs> I 
I learn from the best. Pinkie Pie's not here because she was disgusted. You disgust her. You show off. It was a baby, an Ursa Minor. That was just it. Oh! Rampaging. It was just cranky because someone woke it up. Oh. Well, if that was an Ursa Minor, then. Dumb boys, am I right? Oh my god, I made it women that are uglier than that. I can't judge her for that technique. I use the same one. Maybe someday she'll learn her lesson. And I sat up an anvil over there. Now, about you two. Uh, <laughs> well, we're sorry that we woke up. We deserve whatever punishment you give us. Just don't make for it starters, weird. You can clean up this mess. And what do you think, Spike? Should I give them number twenty-five? Oh, twenty-five. Yes. And I um. think I deserve it too. Huh? I think you're right. Sweet. Yeah, mustaches. We all look like pedophiles now because we're wacky boys. Thick ass. Or maybe the mustache wasn't enough. Maybe if I had a mustache and a beard. Oh, not this again. Okay. Now he's thinking like a Ryan! Next episode, literally, it's just me. Hey guys! I made a YouTube channel! I'm Spike! Why do you think I keep up beating up Carl? It's, I'm secretly jealous that I created a character to <laughs> take over my very spot. It's a very, very uh, confusing and paradoxical uh, idea, but things happen! Well, I enjoyed that episode, but I feel like the biggest problem I had with it is that we learned that if everyone was in life-threatening danger, Sparkle Pants wouldn't use it because she's like, my friends will be dead, but I don't want them judging me in their grave. <laughs> so now comes the question. Who did I like more? Gilda? Or Trixie. Likewise, I feel like I like Gilda a little more. But as a villain, I feel like Trixie's better because holy shit, was she annoying. <laughs> I give full credit to the voice actor for Trixie because that voice is the sassiest, narcissistic voice she could find. Or at least for a character. So good job. I guess it would be a tone, not a voice, huh? Also, once again, something immensely clever. I really like the, the Ursa Minor. Also, Ursa Major, Ursa Minor. I know that's based off of something, but for the life of me, I can't think of it. I think it's a musical thing. I could be mistaken. I really don't, I don't remember. Ursa, Ma well, okay, Major and Minor. I'm, maybe, it's, you know, Ryan, I haven't looked yet, but somehow I feel maybe it's got to do something with space. <laughs> It's space related. <laughs> so anyway, so my final thoughts of the episode would be, I enjoyed it, but for some reason, I didn't enjoy it as the last two episodes. I enjoyed the Applejack and the Pinkie Pie episode more. And I'm trying to process why that is. I found Trixie to be uh, a better villain than and Gilda. Gilda just seemed like just a, your average bully that's in everything. Trixie... She felt like someone you wanted to punch. I'm gonna be honest. I wanted to punch Trixie. Like, if I was that Sarah, I wish someone just went... <laughs> just a quick jab. Ah, my nostril! You punched me so hard, flowers came out of my palm. Or... Hoof. <sighs> but I think the reason I didn't enjoy it as much is, one, I did not like the dumb characters. Why is one of the dumb ones, the really dumb one, Canadian? Uh, and two... Why is the other one a hillbilly? I mean, I, I guess the... Uh, uh, I can understand. Listen, there's a lot, there's a lot of the hillbilly dumb stereotypes uh, out there. 
But the Canadian dumb one just kind of goes, no. There's a chance that the voice actor is Canadian, and he accidentally slipped that in there. <laughs> then it's perfectly fine. Then it's just then it's just Canadian being Canadian, or at least using Canadian terms like a. But the other thing I didn't like, besides the the male new male characters, that pushes my my little ponies hates male theory even further. <laughs> I wonder if they're doing the old, like, this is a show for girls, let's make the, all those dumb old boys. Like, I mean, I don't really blame them for that in a kid sense, because I feel like for boys, how many shows has that girl, and they're just like, I dumb old girls, I hate girls, they're dumb and smelly. So I can't really blame them if on a girl show they did the opposite. That's equality for you. <laughs> But the other thing I didn't like, uh, which I mentioned at the beginning, I it, I think just kind of took me out of it, is the fact that the entire basis of this episode was Sparkle Pants would not defend her friends because she thought it was braggadocious to defend her friends. And there, to me, there's just such a gap there. Such a huge gap in logic to say that. To think, if I... If, the, if she did so horrible to my friend and I did magic back to defend her, that would be considered braggadocious. Because braggadocious would imply it's an egotistical thing, so it, the action was selfish, but it would be to help a friend, therefore it would not be braggadocious because you're helping a friend. It's very far from braggadocious, unless this entire thing was a mix-up. But I feel like Sparkle Pants is, like, considered a smart character. She's reading books and she's supposed to be the smart one. So I find it hard to believe that she would be the one that would be so confused on this, this action. And the other thing is there really isn't a moral to kids. Because if the moral to kids is, don't be braggadocious with your magic! One psychic little girl's gonna learn her lesson. That's about it. Anyways, folks, I don't know. It was an all right episode. I like Trixie, though. I, I think she's a good villain. I wouldn't mind her coming back just to see her get her comeuppance. And I am curious to see if Gilda and Trixie are gonna come back. I feel like Trixie's gotta come back. Because I have seen Trixie before in, like, the uh, pictures. So I have a feeling she's gonna come back. I wonder if she's gonna be the Vegeta. I feel like she has a better chance of being the Vegeta than Gilda. But I could be mistaken. And for those who don't watch anime and don't know what that means, that is a person that starts off as a villain, a really annoying villain, and then comes back and becomes an important key player of the good guys. But anyways, folks, that was another episode of MLP. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, remember to subscribe, leave a like down below, and write a comment on what you like me to react to next. If you want to see these episodes early, I have a Patreon. Now, if you scares me, folks, I gotta end with some magic. Wow, how'd I get over here? Must be magic. Now, Ryan, remember to edit that in, otherwise you're gonna look really stupid.